Hello everyone and welcome to Bombless Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about the management of scissor bite now. Scissor bite is a lot of frequent occurring in our dental practices when we're talking about orthodontics. However, when we encounter such patients, so we should know how to treat scissor bites. So in this video, we'll learn about everything that you need to know in order to manage scissor bites. So let's get started. Now, to begin with, if we talk about the definition of scissor bite, it basically means that there is buccal displacement of maxillary teeth and with or without the lingual displacement of the mandibular molar. Now, what do we mean by that? In a normal relation, you can see that there is a maxillary molar and then we have a mandibular molar. Now, this is the normal relation which is present. However, in cases of scissor bite, what we see is that, for example, now this is a maxillary molar and this is a mandibular molar. So, this is basically called as scissor bite, where you can see that in normal cases, the maxillary molar and mandibular molar are in this relation. However, in cases of scissor bite, the maxillary molar is present completely buckled to the lingual placed, lingually placed mandibular molar. So, we appreciate this relation it seems like a scissor that's why it is called as a scissor bite or it is also called as rudy's bite now if we talk about the etiology of scissor bite in this picture you can see that this is the maxillary molar and this is the mandibular molar and you can see how they are present in this relation where the maxillary molar is completely present buckled to the mandibular molar so this is called as scissor bite and the reason behind developing scissor bite is basically there is excessive maxillary width along with narrow mandibular alveolar process. This mandibular alveolar process is narrow, however, this maxillary process is excessive in width. Therefore, this maxillary molar is placed buccally as compared to mandibular molar which is present lingually. So, this is the etiology which eventually leads to scissor bite malocclusion. Now, if you talk about the characteristics of scissor bite, in this clinical picture, you can appreciate that we have this maxillary molar which is present completely buckled to the lower mandibular molar. So, this mandibular molar is present lingually and this maxillary molar is present completely buckled to it. So, this is the most important characteristic feature and defining feature we appreciate in cases of scissor bite. And Another important thing to note is that there is arch length discrepancy. What we discussed in the previous slide is that the maxillary width is larger as compared to mandibular width. Therefore, this maxillary molar is present buccally and this mandibular molar is present lingually which eventually leads to scissor bite. So, the maxillary molar is present buccally as compared to the lower molar. Now, the lower molar is present lingually which we have discussed. And when the patient closes their mouth, for example, in, in this picture, you can see when, when the patient closes their mouth, you can see that this molar is present, maxillary molar is present buccally, and the mandibular molar is present lingually. Therefore, there is no overlap, which normally should be, as we've discussed in the normal cases, there should be an overlap, and the palatal cusp should occlude in the lower molar's central fossa. That is the normal relation. But in cases of scissor white, there is, com there is no overlap and this molar maxillary molar is present buccally and this lower molar present lingually which basically is scissor bite. Now if you talk about some general features of a patient who is suffering from scissor bite, basically if you talk about facial profile, we may or may not note any significant facial deformity. However, in cases of unilateral scissor bite, we may appreciate slight facial deformity, but this is not that significant as compared to other types of malocclusion. For example, patients with cross bite, class 2 malocclusion, class 3 malocclusions that we have discussed in previous videos. Moving on towards airway, in cases of scissor bite, there is no significant threat or any known disturbances to patients' airway. So, this is all normal in such cases. However, if we talk about chewing, since normal chewing activity requires the maxillary and mandibular molars to contact each other, therefore 
the grinding action can occur since they do not meet so patients chewing habits might be affected depending on the severity of scissor bite now since there is no proper occlusion in the mandibular and maxillary molars there might be some tnt discomfort to the patient they may experience certain clicking or pain but this again depends on the severity of scissor bite now moving on towards the management of patients who are suffering from scissor bite there are various appliances which are available which are offered to the patient depending on the severity and personal choice of the patient along with orthodontists recommendation so there are different appliances that are given to patient who suffer from scissor bite for example in this clinical picture you can see that there are these intermaxillary cross elastics what do we mean by that intermaxillary cross elastics means that the elastics are placed for example on the buccal surface of the maxillary molar and on the lingual surface of the lower mandibular molars this basically exerts a buccal force in this direction for the lower molar so that they are placed in a more buccal direction therefore improving the cross bite so this is the first option intermaxillary cross elastics which are offered to the patient the second appliance which may be used to treat such patients is called as multi bracket appliances now multi bracket appliances basically are those appliances where the brackets have different options for example as you can see in this diagrammatic picture these elastics are placed and these basically help in doing the buccal force of the lower molars so that they can place more buccally and therefore improve the contact between the upper and lower molars so this is multi bracket appliance now the third option that we have to treat such patients is called as transpalatal arch appliance with intramaxillary elastics now in this picture you can appreciate that this is a transpalatal arch and this transpalatal arch can be modified by placement of intramaxillary elastics which basically exerts lingual force to the buccally displaced maxillary molar in order to place them in a more desirable and functionally appropriate position so that the lower and upper molars can occlude properly so transpalatal arch appliance with intramaxillary elastics are another option to treat such patients now the last option that we have is lingual arch appliance with intramaxillary elastics it is similar to the transpalatal arch which is placed maxillary but if certain appliance like transpalatal arch is placed in the lingual teeth or you can say mandibular teeth it is called as lingual arch and doing the same function so this is lingual arch appliance with intramaxillary elastics to treat patient who are suffering from cross bite now there are certain points that you should note when you are using these appliances which are sometimes may lead to certain consequences now firstly you should note that these treatment basically results in extrusive forces of second molar in both jaw so there may be extrusion of the second molars other than that the use of elastics may lead to overbite and clockwise rotation of mandible can also happen so these are certain consequences that you should keep in mind while using such appliances and lastly like all treatments while you are treating scissor bite the treatment depends on patient's cooperation while you are doing or placing any kind of appliances so these are certain points that you should remember when you are using appliances to treat patients who are suffering from scissor bite now lastly talking about certain newer treatments which are introduced and are being used frequently now as compared to the old gold standard treatments but these new treatments are being currently studied and they include the use of titanium microscopes and lastly bite planes so in this video we talked about everything that you need to know about scissor bite what is actually scissor bite then we talked about etiology characteristics features and then lastly we talked about its management so i hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like share subscribe and press the bell icon thank you for watching this video see you next time